All right, we back again. Uh, another moment with Mister. Today I got uh, two special guests with me. I should have stopped by them before they pulled up on me, but uh, I'm going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves. Go ahead, bro. All right, child. I'm uh, No Cap Cuts, uh, Barber at a... Uh, damn. <laughs> yeah, that's a funny story. We're right. going to get into that. Yeah, we're going to get into that, yeah. <laughs> that's a whole story. But, uh, yeah, man. Uh, locally known Barber, you know what I'm saying? Uh, do a lot of celebrity cuts. Um, you know what I'm saying? Been getting it in for a little bit now. Stay the grind. What's up, everybody? My name is Luke Nashawn. If y'all don't know me, um, another celebrity barber in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, you know what I'm saying? Like he said, we cut a lot of you know known artists, local artists, NFL players, college players, things like that. So talk your blessing. shit. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Talk your shit. So uh, how long have y'all been barbering? <sighs> I tell everybody like I say like professionally, like for real taking it serious, like the past like three, four years. But like I always been around some clippers. Like I, I always that. been around some clippers. Me, I, I picked the clippers up like two and a half years ago. You know what I'm saying? It was some, kinda like a last resort kind of thing, but it just kinda worked out for me. It blew up for me. So I feel that you went crazy with it, huh? I had to. <laughs> All right. So uh Let's get into uh, <laughs> the shop. You say uh, it's a funny story about the name. Tell us about that, man. Uh, we had a, uh, you know what I'm saying? So when I first opened up the shop, I basically was asking, like, I was like handpicking people that I thought that was raw in the city. But they was ready in their own shop, you know what I'm saying? Right. So I was like, hey, I'm finna open up a shop. Like, I know you you doing good where you at. I would love to basically draft you to the team. Right, <laughs> right. On some joke, right? <laughs> And he was like one of the first people I asked. I think he was the first person I asked for real. Uh, I was like, "Boy, you a first round pick." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> message. I was like, "You a first round pick?" He was like, "That's you." So we had that instant connection. You know what I'm saying? I was. I ain't gonna lie. When I opened the shop, it was like I ain't do it the right way. In a sense, it was at first it was like a little franchise because like nobody would help me open it. I didn't have like the business credit and things like that. I never had a commercial property before. Right. So I asked one of my homeboys. You know what I'm saying? If we could. If I could basically franchise his business. And he was like, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. You know what I'm saying? Venture out. You know what I'm saying? Still today, I'm very appreciative of him, you know, helping me because I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, shout out to damn Sam. But, um, you know what I'm saying? As time went on, I just felt that, like, I had a different vision for the shop. I wanted to do more of, like, hype apparel, like you see, like, the companions you have here. Like, I'm into stuff like that. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, my boy was more into, like, the Greek mythology, which was raw, too. Yeah, I yeah, thought, yeah. I thought the jump was raw. That's why you see, like, the... You come in my shop, I have, like, the sky. Yep, yep. And things like that. But when I first got the property, I ain't gonna lie, it was an old church, and the walls were purple. <laughs> <laughs> so I opened it, and, and I was like... It was like, all right, this is it. I said... Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you, I'm building it <laughs> while I'm doing it. Got you. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. And they were like, "Well, shit, we already, we already we here, yeah. We're here now. We gotta make something out of it." <laughs> I'm talking about it was just toolboxes, no mirrors. <laughs> but we had an ATM before we had mirrors on the wall. And we had an ATM before we had the floor done. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm That's saying? That's some real shit. And right. then it ended up like just blowing up, and I basically got more people into it. But the name, um was a 12 hair studio, but then I broke the franchise. And the funny story is like, you know what I'm saying? I got a, 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 you know, somebody that used to work in the shop, a good friend of ours, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no bad blood, nothing. Right. But like, you know what I'm saying? He uh he opened up a clothing brand called uh Top Tier Outfitters. So I was like, oh man, let's let's do Top Tier. You know what I'm saying? And then, uh, so we all kind of agreed with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We are like, all right, Top Tier. So the shop name was going to be the new Top Tier. But you know what I'm saying? I didn't I personally didn't want to feel like I was biting on my boy's shit. Right, right. You know what I'm right. saying? And then like affect his business or it looked like, dang, he just stole your shit. You feel me? So you know what I'm saying? To this day, like we still haven't came up with a name. That bitch said Luke Nation LLC. <laughs> <laughs> you know nameless around this mug, but shit, we're gonna get that shit. Hey man, Some everything happened with time. Me, bro. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But like it's like I feel like we I feel like the shop. Don't even need a name for real. I was gonna say it ain't affect the business, so nah. at the end of the day, that don't matter none, you know. Right, right. Cause you know they they own shop. You right. Feel me? When right. I open up the, I'm like a landlord, but I don't even like looking at myself as the boss. Like you can ask them boys. I'm I'll go in there and be like, where you need me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even got it to where like we all breaking it down. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
I and then it. like we all like really take care of each other. We look out for each other. So it's more on on like some family stuff than just like a barbershop. We not normal barbershop. You been in there? You yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. Not at all. Nah, it's <laughs> a good vibe a in there for sure. Bro. For sure. Uh, so let's get more into um, you know the aesthetic in there, man. As you as you saw the vision, you said you walked in. It was an old church, man. How did you uh, piece everything together? Off oh, real, I knew we had God on our side. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> no, but nah, like, for real, like, Shout out to the I was man. like, for real, I was like, <laughs> man, I ain't gonna lie to you. I looked at it and. I, One time for the good Lord. Lord. Yeah. You know, so, you know what I'm saying? Like, at the same time, like, I was nervous, bro, because I never opened up a shop before. I have a whole bunch of personalities in there that I, I don't even know. I just, right, I just right. love their work. So I was yeah. like, man, let's, let's, let's form a super barber team. For sure. And they was like, yeah, yeah, that shit sound raw. Yeah. So I was like, all right. As we did that, we had got a lot of hate in the city too. Cause they like, damn, these niggas do too much. Or uh they made fun of us for calling ourselves celebrity barbers, but end up like really blowing up for us and <laughs> us really cutting some as a joke. Right, right. It right. became something real. Yeah. Yeah. And you then, spoke like, it into fruition. And we oh, didn't even know. Sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like as a shop and stuff, like, you know what I'm saying? If y'all come in, it's it's a whole vibe. You know what I'm saying? We treat everybody like celebrities. You don't have to just be a celebrity to get a cut in my shop. Like, you know what I'm saying? You can come in, you're going to feel like a celebrity walking out by yeah. all the great work that's in there. Not not just me. Like, everybody in there is, is equal. Everybody the same. So that's what makes it better. It's like iron, sharper iron. For sure. For yeah. sure. As long as you book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as long as you book, we're going to like we coming in with the it. last minute Man. stuff. We gonna get you right, but that should be aggravating, here, bitch. See what out. time we in? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We missed our whole podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, they definitely be locked in. I mean, I can say this from firsthand experience. I've definitely hit cap, uh, no cap, a couple times and been like, "Yo, look, uh, I know it's late, man, and I, I see your your last appointment just got booked. <laughs> yeah, but shit, I need a cut. What's up? <laughs> you know what? I right, niggas appreciate that the most because yeah. most people just put their head through. the and give you that look. Right, like, right. Like y'all cutting? I couldn't. Nah, we just nah, uh, we just a barbershop. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. Have a premium. <laughs> we have a premium. <laughs> right. Straight up. Uh, but yeah. So let me ask this, man. What are some of the challenges that y'all faced before you uh got in the barber? Like, were there any uh, you see you talked about it from the business side, but uh when you wanted to get your license, how was that experience? Mm. Like you talking about like just getting a license for like to be a barber? Right. I mean, you know, you got to go to school, but like, I ain't gonna lie, they, I probably gonna get in trouble for this, but I don't care. You know what I'm saying? It's not cut, right? <laughs> hey, we're behind the paywall. Right, right, right. Like this, like, okay, school, you don't learn, school is a scam, bro. You yeah, don't learn yeah, shit in course, school. Of course, course. Like, everything. I can curse shit, right? Yeah, like, you don't learn nothing in school. So I would tell you, I would tell people go on YouTube, find somebody you really like, or find a Barbie really like, and just be like, damn, I wanna really learn to you. I know you're probably busy, but can I just watch you? I'll shut up and just. Straight up. That's what I did. Like, when I went to school, I was like, why am I here? Like, you feel me? I'm, I never been a school person, even in high school. Yeah. So I was like, I'm a hands-on kind of guy. I want to start cutting. I want to start making mistakes and learning. So school is a good right, place right. to make mistakes. So like when you get into like the real field, you know what you're doing. Like that's any any school. You feel me? But right. like the licensing is just like sanitation. So you just be like, you really learn about like diseases, like spread it. Because barbering is like the number two business that spreads the most diseases. Damn. And people don't know that. They think they're just getting a fresh cut. Right. And you got to take an AIDS course, like. Blood, like yeah, if, yeah, I, that's if, if I cut shit. somebody with blood with AIDS, and I cut you, and I didn't change my blade on their bloods on that, and I just straight up. Now you got that, yeah. you feel me? But like it's more than just cutting hair. But like we look at it as like like no weird shit. But like we do more than just cut hair too, though. Yeah, yeah, for real. You feel me? We trying to be bigger than just barbers. Like barbering is our is our job. Like how we make money, but we into like everything else too. We got we know more people too. Right, right. Yeah, gotta so. have fun, bro. I say like. My my experience was a little different because like I started my school journey while I was still in the military. So like, you know, I saw the cap immediately. Like I was just like, but well, y'all want some money. Like yeah. you know what I'm saying? But hey, you know, you handle that end up, you get what you need from it, and you never gotta see them folks again. So, right, right. Yeah. So most definitely that's that's really it. Like all it is to it. So how long has the shop been open now? It's gonna be two years in uh, November, November fourth. Yeah, two man. Years. It ain't really got shut down at all, like man. It, like <laughs> yeah. we we've we been through a lot, bro. Like I told you, like it was my first time opening a shop, so it's like I didn't know how to do it because when I broke that franchise, all right, this is all you now. 
Right. Like the guy, like basically, like when I did the franchise, it was more of like I pay for everything and you do the paperwork, mm -hmm. which was like the biggest make, mistake I ever made because it's like I didn't really know nothing. Yeah, you didn't get to see it firsthand. It's like exactly like like you should never just have some money and just give it to somebody and it'd be like, yeah, make make me make this money. Right. Right. And you not even know what how it is. Like, or have a nigga standing in your shop painting and smoking cigarettes. Straight up. <laughs> like, straight up. Right. We didn't have some crazy yeah, bro, shit. Yeah, man. Crazy. Like, uh. But like. <laughs> It's two Oh, years. that was first hand. Bro, listen. <laughs> we didn't have like so basically like I had a you know, when you get a building, it was basically nothing there. It was a church. So I had right, to make a right. church into a barbershop. Mm -hmm. So I'm out here trying to find general contractors and stuff. Right. And I found one that wasn't knocking out the head. Like I said, I just cut hair, bro. Like that's a lot of haircuts to yeah, yeah, yeah. to right. get stuff built. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. So he, he met me. He seemed like a cool dude. Yeah. Old, old white dude. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yeah, man. I did the Trump Towers and stuff. When he said that, I looked at the photo. I was like, oh, that looks like it's on Google. He was like, that's my work. So I was like, <laughs> I was like, all right, bro. On, bro. I was on. like, all right, bro. We just going to give it a shot. Right, right, right. <laughs> man, listen. He came in, came in. Bro, he fucked everything up. I was like, bro, what is this? And he talking about he got like cancer and all this other stuff. So my shop wasn't done for weeks. And I only got like two months free. So in my yeah, head, I had yeah, too much yeah. to build everything right? Straight with my up. lease that I had. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm talking about it got so bad. We started cutting there with messed up floors and the the, the windows was uh, blocked off with wood. So people didn't know <laughs> that it was a barbershop. It's like yeah. a whole trap for real. Yeah. <laughs> we we <laughs> got families funny. and stuff to take care of, bro. Like, yeah, it was like, man, we got to make some money, bro. Straight up. Nah, I definitely get that. So no cap for you, man. Uh, working through those experiences, right? What was it like in your head? Was there ever a point to where you was like, man, I should have stayed where I was at? <laughs> um, you want to know what's wild about that, bro? It's crazy you said that. Like, <laughs> not one point in my mind did I just say, you know what? I'm, bro, I'm not, I've never been a quitter. Like, right. I, that ain't never been in my body parts, none of that shit. Like, if it don't work, it best believe I tried a thousand times. So. I hear that. So yeah, nah, <laughs> not once did I even think about, hey, let me bust a U-turn because I ain't big on that. That's my personality. Like, I said, if it don't work, he, it don't he, work. He not lying, man. Like, yeah. when I first met him, and like, remember I told you, at first I just DM'd him, like, bro, you raw. Let's yeah. link up, right? Yeah, straight up. We linked up, and come to find out he has the same birthday as me. Word. He's the same age as me. The same <laughs> birthday? Like, I'm like, bro, yeah, I've yeah. never met somebody <laughs> with my birthday. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> We can't bust your friends, but I one thing I know about him, it's not even about like him not quitting. He just know how to survive, bro. Yeah. Some people don't yeah. know how to survive. Like some people just like had that shit, but can't survive. You feel me? I'm like, damn, are you really surviving this bit? Like, <laughs> right, right, I'm right. trying my hardest too, but I'm watching this man. Like, come on, bro, this shit gonna work. Yeah. But all we kept saying was like, bro, this shit gonna work. This shit gonna work. Shit gonna and we, and if you looked at it, if you look at us, they be like, these motherfuckers crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't shit in here, bro. What do you Straight all see? Up, they bro. didn't see what we saw. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. I'm almost certain every like <laughs> nigga in the city who's ever picked up a pair of clippers and tried to do this shit, like, like they looked up at us after a while and they was just like, bro. What are these niggas doing? Like, what are, what are these niggas doing that, that we, we not, not doing? Yeah. And bro, just not quitting, bro. People quit on themselves, they don't even know it. Like, like you you be so quick to give up on something you so like dead ass passionate about mm -hmm. based off of what somebody else think, and that's your first mistake, bro. I could give two fucks about what anybody think. Like, as long as you know your worth and yourself, bro, you gonna psh, sky the limit. Like, right, say, right. Like, not even on no cliche shit. Like, that's for real. Like, nah, I hear that. I hear that. that. Give up on themselves. So, yeah, yeah that'd be the number one problem. You ain't lying. That's some good advice for our listeners, man. Like I say, uh, we got a lot of entrepreneurs that tap in with us, a lot of artists, producers, right. things like that. Right. And in those realms especially, you know, it's easy to listen to what somebody else say and, and give up, stop stop drive, uh, stop moving with the same intent. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Um, sometimes people pivot too soon. Was there ever a point to where, you know, as you were trying to get the shop or you were trying to build things out, you thought, Maybe I need to switch up my game plan. Yeah, all the time. I was like, <laughs> I, I used to, I used to go to him and be like, "Hey, I'm not crazy, right? This shit gonna work, right?" He talking about nigga, you asking me that shit? <laughs> yeah, but I'm just like, that's a lot of times I had doubt in myself yeah. because, like, bro, when my shop got shut down, I seen seven grown ass men look at me like, "What we finna do?" Straight up, right? That's some real so shit. So I'm just like, damn. 
I didn't think about that shit. I right. was like, for one time, I didn't have no answer for them. Yeah. I said, bro, look, I'll try to call some shops and just try to finish up y'all day. And I'm going to try to do whatever I can. Yeah. But like, going back to God, bro, like the most craziest thing happened, bro. Like, state board is like the barber police, right? They came mm -hmm. in and shut me down. Then they found out like my building wasn't up to, it was just like, a big mess, right? Yeah. Everything taken care of. So we legit now. So. Yeah, we good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to all motherfucking <laughs> dope. Listen, I'm going to beat up. Oh, my God. <laughs> but like, we, um, Man, the lady called me and I but she was like, I'm gonna have to shut you down. And I was like, I said, Well, can we at least finish our day? Like, I said, man, like not trying to like basically dick ride or nothing. We was like, we got families. Like yeah. we really just trying to like make some money. We don't bother nobody. Right. But we had such high traffic. Like everybody like cause think about it, we all book barbers. Yeah. So like you bring all your clientele from different parts of Jacksonville, west, north, east, south, all in one little one little uh 800 square feet building right right, right packing right. it out and then with no sign outside with wooden floors they like you're gonna be like what's going on in there yeah you know what i'm saying but they finally caught our ass yeah. <laughs> yeah. they got our ass but you know that was a little bit of a lot of bit of hate and it go back to my next thing like if you were the field where you know what i'm saying it's a lot of people working in your field and this is like a peer group if you ever look up and you looking at a motherfucker and they doing something that they that you not doing and they winning at it and you look at that shit and you be like, why I'm not there? Boy, you a hater. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's the wrong question. You need yeah, to be yeah, doing, that should be, it focusing should be on yourself. Inspiring. You be looking yeah. in the mirror because it's something you not doing. You know what I'm saying? You you looking at the next nigga. Don't take off the next nigga plate to satisfy yourself. But, you know, real haters, you know, we ain't going to acknowledge them because I ain't we got a button for them. Green ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nah, for real. Yeah. You know, you know what bro, I'm saying? Bro, it's some green niggas out there, bro. But you it's a lot. It's a lot of hate, but like, hate. I always be like, I let them hate because when you let them hate, it's like them venting or something. You feel they make them feel better about themselves. So go ahead, man. Not just that. I'm gonna tell you what. All that hating people do bring more attention to you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you ain't lying. If they hate you, if you if you ain't hating on you, ain't doing that right. You ain't doing right. it right. You know right. what I'm saying? All this love, somebody got to hate you, bro. Come yeah. on now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying about that. Shoot my people up. Damn. So, I right, with the celebrity barbers, right? Like, mm -hmm. how does that how how did that come about? Like, you say you say it started off as a joke, right? But yeah. at what point did y'all really realize, like, yo, look, we 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 the celebrity barbers in the city? All right. So I ain't gonna lie to you. You can ask them. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm not the kind of guy to be like I started that shit, right? But like, um, so my, so when I became a barber, I'm gonna tell you a little story how I became a barber first. So you kind of understand how I came up with the yeah. celebrity barber shit, right? So when I was about to be a barber, at the time, you know what I'm saying, I was with somebody, and you know, she, she was like a hairstylist and shit, and I had a kid on the way. Gotcha. So. When I found out I had a kid on the way, I felt like I had to do something. And I didn't know what to do. I couldn't keep a job for more than a year. I hear that. You know what I'm saying? I had like this busted up car. I was really trying. I was in the military, got kicked out of the military. It's like, how you get kicked out of the military, bro? How you mess that up, right? Right, right. Like, you, you get paid on the first and 15th. You can't fuck that <laughs> up. I fucked that up. And then I was like, damn, I'm, I'm like down bad. Yeah. So I told myself, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to cut hair. Like, one of my. I went to go get a haircut. My barber at the time was like, bro, you should cut hair. You got an image. Yeah. I said, hell no, nah, you got that shit. <laughs> I said, my fault. I said, I'm not, I'm not finna cut hair, bro. I was like, no, nah, I ain't even messing nobody. He was like, bro, I'm gonna take you to the school, give it a chance. Yeah. You feel me? So when I told my grandpa, my grandpa, uh, he old, bro. He's like 90 something. He still cut grass, bro. Right. And he was like, he was like, he was like, I told him I'm finna cut hair. He was like, oh, so you a celebrity? And I said, what? He said back in the day, all the girls went to the barbers and stuff word, because they had word. all the money. Yeah, yeah. Like, even though cuts was like three, two dollars. Right, right. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. You got to think, yeah, you getting them they, so consistent. Had, same way. They had way. the cash. Right. right. <laughs> so like all the girls went to the bar. He was like, so he was, he was like before like the rappers and stuff, and he was like everybody went to the barbers. Yeah. So I was like for real, and I was like, so what I did was, I just you know on Instagram you can like put like your name. I could be like Luke Nation, right. but I put celebrity barber on it. And then when I put celebrity barber on it, uh, the first like celebrity I cut was uh, you. He's from here. He known uh, John Gabbana. Yeah. Of course, he used to be known as Boot Game, but you know my bro really turned his life around. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. He boxing, he really doing did. amazing yeah. stuff now. Yeah. His name is John John Gabbana, and he uh I was able to cut him. I was cutting at my house because at first I was cutting in the mall, but COVID happened. Got you. So he was like, hey, since you got celeb, you're a celebrity barber. 
And I just ran with it. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I said, yeah. He was like, well, I'm trying to get a haircut. I heard that you're the best. I said, all right, yeah. I was like, I was like, <laughs> that's bro. funny. Because at first I was like, who's John Gabbana? I never seen like I saw a blue check. I saw the blue check. I was like, oh yeah, I'm trying to go up. Yeah, straight up. And you know everybody followed him. Right. So when I cut him, it just led to the next person, the next person, the next person. I just got a bunch of blue checks. Yeah. And I was like, so I remember I cut a uh, spot him, got him. Okay. And then I went to Spotum's house and I cut him. And when I posted him, Duval promo posted me and it was like somebody on there was like. You are you a whole celebrity barber out here. Yeah. So I kind of just like ran Kept with it. Going. Yeah. Then when I asked them to come work with me, and you know, I said, look, I said I believe in like strength and numbers. Straight I was up. like, I don't believe that like if I'm the only one, like he, my boy got diamonds on his neck. Yeah. I got diamonds yeah. on my neck. I feel like I I don't feel like I, I should be the only one with that. I feel right. like we should all have that. If I can have a a big Cuban, yeah, I can get it. But I rather chop it up and where everybody have a little piece. Straight up. And we all, we all icy. Yeah. You feel me? So I told him, I said, look, I challenge y'all to help me build this celebrity barber name in Jacksonville. There's celebrity barbers everywhere. Right, bro. right. But I, I challenged him. They was like, for sure. He cut Lil Papa, he blew up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he got the next artist. I think his best, one of his good friends is Aunt Chamberlain. Mm -hmm. And he's a 2 producer. He does a whole bunch of music. Like, right. Motion just started happening for everybody, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you feel me? And then like we we got we got one we got probably the youngest barber in the city, working in our shop now. His name is Cashway Cuts. Okay. He cut NLE Chopper. Word. Like you feel me? Like so I'm I'm just like bro, we really doing something. And they always be like, bro, you did that, you did that shit. Yeah. I'd be like, hell no, nah, we did that shit. Straight up. You feel me? When 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 you go to our shop, they be like, oh them them barbers. Or yeah. When we go out, they be like them them barbers. You feel me? So I'd be like. I be sometimes I be hating that shit because I'd be like, damn, like we know the people too. Like we just yeah, want to yeah, chill yeah, and have yeah. fun. Oh, y'all call the celebrity. Luke and Axe, bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, bro, I remember this one time we went to Wasabi, bro. God bless this little kid so bro. We walked through the door. Luke ain't even had time to like even acknowledge he was in that motherfucker. Luke, Luke they shine. They were like, <laughs> he, was, he was like, he was like, he was like, hey Luke Nishan. And you could tell like it was on some like fan shit. Yeah. So I was like, what's up, little bro? Yeah. Like, you know what I'm saying? And I turned around and they all they all laughing at me. They're like, bro, that shit crazy. Yeah. And I'm like, well shit. Said, Luke, bro, you don't need no to do But like I would tell myself, like, man, i I like to be behind my boys. Right. You feel me? I'd rather let them get the, the shine and shit. Straight up. I'm do whatever I can to bring the whole team on. That's that's I'm big on that, bro. Like, for sure, for sure. I'm a team dude, you feel me? So now one thing that I love about the shop, man, it's always great energy. You know, I've been in there a few times, you know what I'm saying? And every time it felt like, you know, I've been there a million times, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So everybody very welcoming, you know, it's a good energy. Like I say, great aesthetic in there, you know what I mean? That's From the I painting and all of that, you know? Yes, sir. Uh, you got an eye for style too. They got a couple <laughs> rugs up there, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shout out Club with the fucking rug. Yeah, hey, this man, right. this man talented. He talking about hey, us, man. but <laughs> let, let me put the camera on him real quick. Right, right, right. Nah, nah, man, nah. <laughs> Hey man, Sorry. I'm trying to get like y'all. You know what I'm saying? That, that boy too humble. <laughs> too hey, humble. I will say this, too man. Humble. I got hit up today, and uh, one of my last commissions was a Grammy Grammy Award winning producer. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm kind you ain't got no clapping. Yeah, 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 come yeah. on, man. We, yo. It ain't too often I toot toot, yo. but <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> But nah, man, um, like I say, one of the main reasons why uh, I wanted to do this show is because it's a lot of dope people that are doing major things, right? Mm -hmm. And when you talk to your average, when you talk to friends and, and just people in passing, everybody got something that they really want to do, right? Mm -hmm. But they're hesitant and, and it's always for what reason, right? Uh, there's a philosopher that lived, <laughs> his name was Neville Goddard and... Um, his philosophy was, you are God, you know? The Bible isn't historical, it's more of a um, a formula of how to like bring out the best in yourself, right? Right. So my question is, if you knew that you couldn't fail at anything, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At that point, what would you do? And that's how I look at things as I, as I attack it in life, you know what I mean? And from the sounds of it, that's how y'all went about every aspect in the barber i ain't gonna lie like the, the question you said if you knew you couldn't fail then what would you do like i mean fear is a big thing you feel it me is. 
And it's like, it's almost in the same way of connected to like faith. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I just had to believe not in, I had to believe in myself first, bro. I had to take a chance on myself. When I made myself into a brand, I became the most successful person I could be. You know what I'm saying? I gave up my nine to five. I gave up, I lost a lot of friendships, relationship, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, to this day, you know, people like my close ones, my loved ones to be like, man, you work too much and this and that. But like, you got to <laughs> believe in yourself, bro. Like, like when you when you when you quit that nine to five, you work twenty four seven now. Talk about it. But you know you know what I'm saying I didn't I didn't have a plan B because I felt like it distracted me from a plan A. Come on. You feel me? Come so on. so I told him boys, I'm like, look, bro. I I I told you, bro. I looked at him. I was like, oh, this gonna work, right? Yeah. He talking about yeah, it's gonna work. But I knew that like it was a chance that I was like, okay, if I lost everything, I'll be okay because I came from nothing. Right. So I remember right. I remember like how to be back from ground zero. Straight so like up. niggas be looking at me and us like, oh, they got diamonds, they got the rods, cars and shit. I could lose all that shit tomorrow and I'll be the happiest person. I'm gonna person. bounce right back. Yeah. Yeah. You feel me? I know that I can get everything back, man. I just totaled my car. I just totaled my car. You know what I'm saying? And honestly, yeah. I ain't thought not once about the the downside of it. And we come in we live in the biggest city land wise. You know what I mean? <laughs> it ain't easy to You know what I'm saying? It ain't that You can't even to, take the bus, bro. Come like on, me, talk about that shit. Bro. You know what I'm right. saying? Listen. But at the end of the day, it's like, yo, some of that shit can be a distraction within itself, you know? Uh for me right now, it was like, all right, cool. Now I ain't gotta pay gas. You know what I'm saying? And like <laughs> I might have to commute, you know, pay a little bit for my commute, but now I spend more time up here at the studio, more effective, you know what I mean? I already worked a lot, you know, but now it's like I doubled that just to keep the efficiency high and to bounce back. You know what I mean? So like you say, sometimes we face with challenges and we do have to remember that. Yo, I've been here before. I I, I can I overcame then. I can easily bounce back from it now, yeah. you know? Bro, I ain't going to lie. Life I, outside me. my shop right now, there's a homeless man that mm. live damn near next door to the uh, like to an old no damn near that nigga live in that motherfucker Look, right, he right. live that it's, it's live like a shed it's like a like a shed where you put tools and stuff yeah. this man got a mattress in there and everything and i be looking i'm like bro i'm blessed as fuck hey. i'm so blessed cuz like i be thinking i be having the worst shit shit could be worse bro 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 lost his mind bro when y'all see yeah, when y'all go to my shop y'all might see him out there yeah but like he don't i don't be bothering nobody either that nigga be bothering nobody he just he, be out there yeah, screaming he, and shit Taking his clothes off, yeah, running yeah. water and shit. But hey, he ain't, he ain't got nothing else to do. Right. But like, I'd be like, man, I'm blessed, bro. You feel me? Nah, I think that's that's a great point. And sometimes we need those uh, reminders. You know what I'm saying? Um, I've done a lot in my life, you know, to where I've constantly been reminded how blessed I am. You know what I mean? I talk about it quite a bit on the podcast. But like, I used to do removals for a funeral home, mm. and I, I bring it up because there are times to where I stray and I forget, like I get so lost in my frustration that I'm like, yo, look, I'm breathing. You know what I'm saying? I'm above ground. I got a, I got a sane mind. I know that if I fell down 10 times over from now, I could go, I could call my mom and at least I got somewhere I could lay my head. I know I could call my dog and at least I got something to eat. You know what I mean? Like it's, it, it, not everybody has that. Not everybody was able to sustain those relationships. You know what I mean? And of course, I don't pity those who burn bridges and things like that. But just as a, a humane person, like. Facts. If you know you put your best hand forward, you know what I'm saying? You never did nobody no ways, you know. Right. What you do, that's on you, you feel me? Yeah. Because you can't control nobody but yourself. So I feel like. I feel you. You know, you say you like lost your car. You know what I'm saying? Now you get more time to focus on yourself and everything. Like, you know, we I think I think what makes it hard is cause we're men. You feel me? At the end we of the day. We don't get though, you know, yeah. Talk so, about it. Like we, we men, Ain't nobody so like nobody got them catch some tears, boy. Yeah. Yo, hey, hey. hey, you in the hot <laughs> pot, up. bro. You just Straight be like, up, damn, yeah. I'm this shit really suck. But like like I said, you gotta just sit that. I bet you like the other you had more time, you could really sit down, you'd be like, bro. Like, damn, I know we need, like, those things, like, cars to get places and things like that. But they so material, like, that's just a, a, a material thing, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, feel free. <laughs> nah, but, like, like I said, you know, at the end of the day, we men, you feel me? Like, that's what makes it harder for us. Like, it's like a man is supposed to be, like, the provider. A man's supposed to do everything. That's just how it is, right? Yeah, it definitely is. And, like... I saw uh, someone talking about it once. Uh, they were saying that 
most time men feel more stressed because they're thinking like, yo, um, I have to, I, I don't, I can't take a break. I can't relax. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that when you're starting something new and you're faced with these challenges, outside in, people are looking at you. They say, yo, take a break from it. It'll be easier when you come back to it, right? Yeah. It's hard, when, it's hard to take those breaks when you have deadlines you got to meet. When That's you everyday life shit, right? Come on, when you understand that, yo, every second that I'm not working on my business, I'm taking away from my business. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, yo, man, you you saying a lot of powerful things, and I hope the listeners is jotting down notes or something. You know what I mean? Because all of this is definitely good for the mental state and good for your entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. You you right, man? Like, like when I say, but like, bro, like I said, bro, just. At the end of the day, bro, sometimes like I'm not I ain't no like super like religious dude, right? Nah, I get but it. But I'm a, I, if 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 y'all don't hear anything I say today, right? I want y'all to remember one thing. You could be good at anything you do, but if you put God first, you're gonna be great at it. Amen. Amen. That was powerful. You feel me? That was powerful. And I was gonna tell you that like I know I ain't like a super like I probably should be in church more and stuff, but I always remember that, you feel me? Cause I always remember that like at the end of the day, if I ain't got nothing, I always got my dad. Yeah, you feel me? And I can always go to him. And like a dad ain't gonna like let you struggle all the time. Right. He's gonna let you learn your lesson, yep. but yep. you can go to him and you can be like, he like, bro, you did that shit. Yeah. Or you know, I know I'm cursing and stuff, but like yeah, you did, yeah, you, nah, did nah, you did, nah, you did that. Like, yeah, I'm yeah, proud yeah, of you. Up. Like you sometimes good. sometimes we I feel like sometimes as men, all we need is that like just a little bit of push. Not even you could just be like that recognition, you be like, Man, you, that's good, it. Good, good job, bro. That's it. That good job, bro, lasts longer than this five dollar gallon. That's it, man. <laughs> right. Five dollar right. gallon, bro. I, I had my take. pops my whole life, man. And you know, it's crazy. I got a client, bro. Being a barber, bro, you get you get touched by so many different walks of life. And it's it's this crazy thing I be thinking about sometimes because I honestly feel like most of the people that come to me are just different versions of myself. Mm -hmm. So it's like, bro, this one nigga comes to me one time and he's like, oh, uh, uh, you know, I haven't been to any of my son's football games, but he's the greatest player in the world. And I'm like, nigga, how do you know? I was like, bro, you need to go, you need to be spending more time with your son. And they hear me, I'm just like, I'm like, bro, I had probably the best dad in the fucking world, bro. Cause right. he, you know what I'm saying? He, he used to give me that proverbial like, like yeah. you did, a, you did that. You know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna do it for you, but you did that shit. So. I ain't gonna lie. Like when I, when I, when I became a barber, bro. Like you you know how it is, or anything. Like if you do anything entrepreneurial, like all right, bro. You make you make raw rugs, right? I know, like you could probably work at like you could be a truck driver. Bro, you, you could do everything. Before I did rugs, <laughs> before I did rugs, I made a great living working part time. Facts. I For made sure. enough part time. That I did not have to stress bills, going out, traveling, none of that shit. I was very well off before I decided to make rugs. You know what right. I'm saying? Right. But you know what's crazy though, Should bro? Feed that like, though. I, 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 I would tell my boys this. Like, we at, at one point we was cutting hair, bro. We wasn't always booked, bro. Like, if we didn't, if if you don't make, if you don't sell a rug, you don't make, you don't make money, right, bro? If I don't and. Talk about that shit, look, man. Look, if you don't sell a, if you don't sell a rug, you ain't gonna make no bread. If I don't cut no hair, I'm not making shit, right? Like they think rent like still they do rent, bro. All that stuff still oh, you do. Gotta Ooh, eat oh, gas. Yeah. Come you on, feel me? but but you clothes. know it's crazy though. I'm gonna tell you right now. My I got friends that make a lot of money, but they hate what they do. Exactly. Like exactly. when you make that rug, and like when I bought the the Comar de Garcon. I'm like, bro, you talented as shit. Bro, I real. think I sat up there 30 minutes when I when bro. I brought him up there, you know what I mean? And like it wasn't to like bask in that shit or nothing like that, but like genuinely it was just to see that yo, my work is being appreciated, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. when I left there, I saw somebody else came and got a cut and they went live post showing y'all showing off the rugs and that shit meant a lot to me you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's definitely a lot that goes uh well let me say we get a lot of uh personal enjoyment from those you know those small small gestures you know of appreciation that's what sure. i'm saying yeah, when, it's the same when, uh, with us bro when, when, you, when you get out there chill with that smile on their face how, how you be feeling how you be feeling when he gets you right man let me tell y'all <laughs> a funny story actually and i meant to tell you this before uh he, he said his last sentiment but it was powerful so we needed that um all right so before y'all came right we had a meeting with someone else mm -hmm. 
two two chicks that do a podcast and um man look we were playing some of our older episodes right? right like i mean not even older episodes just just going through some clips and we played one from the last time i got a cut right right yeah. oh man <laughs> now what's funny about this is when i got the cut i told no cap then i was like look man i'll be working so much that it's hard for me to break away and come get a cut because I got the podcast, you know, and as soon as I'm done with that, I jump right back on the rugs. As soon as I'm done with a rug, I'm going to ship or I'm going to an event, right? He like, I already know, man, I got you. Don't even worry. You got the time now. I'm going to get you right. Man, mm -hmm. I gave him tons of thanks. I'm like, bro, you transformed me, right? Yeah. Nigga look good on camera. So the chick sitting in here tonight, and when they seen me with a haircut, <laughs> Shawty said, "That's you." Facts. I say, "God damn!" Now, if it's like that, bro, you know what I'm saying? We bring me to my next I, point. I said, "I should have told these niggas to bring the bro, clippers." We, bro, we, <laughs> bro, we surgeon, bro. Like you understand, we saving one life at a time, up. haircut at a time. Straight bro. up, talk my, about that. My shit. cuts come with a a guaranteed get your bitch back warranty. If Straight you up, can't get your bitch back with my haircut, nigga. Got the bro. My cut, can, my, cut my cut, my cut. Yo, your bitch gonna leave you. <laughs> she gonna say, she gonna say, you can go outside, but leave the cut and the goals in the house. Straight up, I'm gonna say this, man. These boys bad, man. 100. percent Man, Luke don't ever be there when I'm there, man. He pop in. He a celebrity him, his damn self. So that nigga be you popping in doing? and out. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Luke, Luke is the most busy nigga <laughs> on the world. Bro. But listen. But he going to get you in there, motherfucker, yeah, straight on, up. on my mama. Yeah. I, I remember one time I seen Luke cutting the head, and I was walking out. As soon as he walked in, that nigga grabbed a, a apron at the door, pulled that shit, <laughs> the entire barbershop. He was he pointed at bro to sit down. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. As soon as that nigga sat down, Luke walked through the door, grabbed the apron, threw it on him, and started cutting all within two minutes. I say, God <laughs> damn. Nigga didn't even breathe. Nigga ain't do shit. <laughs> Nigga ain't check the temperature or nothing. <laughs> nigga said, all right, it's time. Why you funny as shit? Hey, boy, I was like, these niggas don't play. Man, because look, we love to play, so we can't play. Straight so, up. So, them Straight days up. like that, best believe we probably was somewhere having a great time, and then we had to turn around and get up in get the morning right and, and get right <laughs> back to it. But I think we play so much because, like, my number one thing with this shit, bro, I don't ever want to feel like no job. Right. I don't want to feel like no job because... All right. See, it, it, it was a hobby first, you know what I'm saying? I got a good question for you, right? Mm -hmm. And it's been asked on the podcast, and I think I've asked my last couple guests, but mm -hmm. you doing what you love, right? Yeah. Right. But you doing it at a very high level. I mean, we talking all day, every day. Y'all got out of the barbershop tonight at what, 10? 10, 10, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Sure. So very high level every day. How do you keep? such a positive mind about barbering period about doing something that you love that has now become a job that has now taken the, the toll on your relationships your time he talk, oh, he yeah yeah, yeah about, i was gonna say he talking yeah, about that paper <laughs> that, that, you rolled a little baseball bat nice little thumb over there oh yeah i'm you know i'm i've retired off of the the backwoods and the the, and the you know what i'm saying the man, and back, and the, niggas all you niggas out there quit smoking them backwoods man it, your back it's getting be worse hurting. it's getting worse bro down. the quality of backwoods oh bro you buy a five me. pack you might get three maybe you got bad luck you broke a mirror, walked <laughs> under a ladder or some shit. One. You ugly as fuck. <laughs> Nigga, you got two. You know what I'm saying? And out of them two, you done fucked up one of them. <laughs> so you smoking one backwood with ease out of that five pack that, that five you done pack. spent $6, six dollars on. Bro. Come on, man. man. Come on. Make it make sense. Bro, one thing about being an entrepreneur, bro. Oh, nigga, I'm counting pennies. Money, bro. You I'm counting pennies. Money. But when you watch every dime that Nigga. you make, <laughs> and then you see how fast you can spend that dime. Straight up. Man, look, Because you know you're going to get it back. You're going to be like, like shoes be 1200 You'd be like, uh, I'm going to get it back Friday. Right, right, right. right, right. right. <laughs> or, uh, like, I remember, man, that shit crazy. But like, hey, we blessed. Yeah, yes. that's it. That's it. Okay. You can splurge, and then you could be frugal. You know what I mean? But yeah. Um, again man how do y'all stay like i say positive minded about something that has now become a job taking taking the place of 
you know, your luxury time to where you would go out to the club, to where you would hang out with friends, go out on dates, things like that. Bro, I ain't even gonna lie to you. I don't like going to the club unless I'm getting paid. Amen. Like, you feel me? Like, oh, see, there I, go that celebrity shit, y'all. No, nah, it's not <laughs> even. It's not that. It's not, <laughs> no, listen. I like. I told him like at first, like, cause like it just well, like cutting hair opened up so many doors and, and opportunities for me to see. Like even you, like you feel me? Like right, right. Th- like this is some fun shit. But I'm gonna tell you straight up, bro. Like you should be compensated for this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like it, it's obviously it's levels, and it's gonna get there. But like the same thing with us. Like I thought at first, I thought I was like we were just going out. But when like people were like, "Hey, bro, we want to pay you to come out," I was like, "What?" Like right, it was weird. Right. It's not like, like just shit. I know it's like on some joke shit. You be like that celebrity shit. But it's like really like we be like, but well, we can really get some money because like, yeah, yeah. bro, I ain't gonna lie, I'm a dad first. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I got I got my own personal life and. Loved it's, ones and you know what I'm saying. It's funny because you you know and I commend you for this, but you hold your family at a very high regard. You know what I'm saying. That, that's my and answer. That's though. one thing that I fuck with about you, like more than anything, for sure. Every time we've talked, you know, you mention how important your family is and everything that you do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying. So yeah, and for like because the reason I bring it up so much is because I ain't gonna lie, I, I was the biggest apologist to my to my loved ones because I'm so busy. Right and. I, and it's crazy, like how, what a bit a difference, a, a big of a difference it is when you're just present, but you out here trying to chase a dollar, right? Straight up, you straight feel up. me? So they can be happy, but dog, all they want you to do is do that. Oh, come on, man! I watched a documentary on Tony Hawk earlier. Uh, me and Amp was kicking it in here, and uh, Tony Hawk was talking about how he became addicted to fame, right? Mm-hmm. And he was like, at some point, he just lost like the reality of I'm missing out time with my kids you know what I mean I'm taking away from them by continuing to push myself further but I'm making excuses for it by saying I'm making money for them I'm doing this and that for them but it's really for yourself type shit exactly exactly so that's a hard balance that's a hard balance I ain't gonna gonna lie I see both sides of the pendulum because it's like you know I had both my parents in Mm -hmm. my life my whole entire life and Amen. they chose a, a job field that don't make a lot of money. You right. know what I'm saying? So we was never broke. We was never rich. We lived in the medium, and they still had to work a lot. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't see my dad every night because he had to work. Right. I didn't see my mom every night because she had to work. Now, with that being said, looking back at it, I'm 27 now, and I'm grown as fuck. And it would have felt good to know, hey, to look at some of these younger cats, nigga, they having like 21 year old dads with baguettes. Yeah. You feel me? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. like I'm, I'm living in a more realistic mind frame nowadays. Right. Right. Like, like times have realistically changed. So I don't necessarily, I'm not one of the people that, that just say like, oh, oh, the, the time that you're spending away from your family while you're making and making for them and the path you're making for them is, you can't make it up with the bread, cause nigga, if y'all was laying in the house with the with the holes in the floor, and sleeping with a goddamn paper towel for all y'all to <laughs> goddamn get some warmth, nigga, you gonna be looking at daddy like he crazy. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not one of them gender roles people, but I'm a realist, bro. It's a lot of shit I don't want my lady to do. Right. Because I'm that. gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? So. I hear that, but it also is a. T- I mean, the economy today, bro. Like. You are, all right, so we're blessed in the sense we both work in fields to where we dictate the value of our work, right? Thanks. But for the vast majority Thanks. of America and the world, for that matter, someone else determines the value of their worth. I never thought about it like that. You get what I'm saying? So, because essentially, that's, that's, that's what we have to realize, like, yo, when I was working these jobs, and like I say, I, I just, uh, like, when I started the rugs, I left a job that paid pretty damn well, you know what I'm saying? And the thing of it was, like, yo, I appreciate what y'all paid me. Y'all paid me the most consistently, you know, from raises and things like that, that I had ever gotten from any other job, right? Mm-hmm. But I feel like I'm giving y'all 10 times what y'all are paying me. I still feel like I'm I'm, I'm deserving of more, right? Mm-hmm. So now I know the more I work, the harder I work, 
I, I determine that worth. I determine that value. I determine how much, you know, at the end of the week, I set a goal or at the beginning of the week, rather, you know, and at the end of the week, I re, 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 revisit it to see if I met what I need to do to to recalibrate whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but, yeah. you know, like I say, a lot of people don't have the... Um, the same means to be oh, able I, to I uh, got you the same means to be able to say that um you know i i'm i'm not gonna have my girl working or 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 doing certain things but i i definitely understand where you're coming from because that's that man's mindset that we was talking about earlier to where you mm -hmm. take on the brunt of things and you say i i'm gonna work these longer hours you know i'm gonna make these sacrifices of time or, or or resource whatever it is so that i can provide better for you Thanks. so it's yep. a it's a double-edged sword it's a double-edged you gotta have the balance that's yeah. why me i'm one of them people i i try to balance like everything i do bro. Yeah. everything in moderation bro. like too much of anything is a bad thing like for sure you need water to survive, but nigga, I swear can, to God, you, you can drown. But you can drown on, on my mama, bro. <laughs> yeah, drink no water. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, everything. So yeah, nah, I just I try to, you know what I'm saying. I don't try to keep my mind wrapped around that. I'm because I know whatever I'm doing with doing right now at this moment is for a purpose. Mm -hmm. Like anything I'm entitled to, my son gonna have. You feel me? Everything, every step I take. You know what I'm saying? He gonna be able to run through it, not walk through it. You exactly, feel me? Yeah. So I got to leave a legacy. Whatever I'm doing right now, I got to leave a legacy. So no, couldn't have change for me because of my child. I will say that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I was a new father. I, I, bro, when I first started cutting, I first got in the shop, bro. I couldn't even stack a thousand because right. I was just it was fuck off money. I was I was in the navy full time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I made about. 400, 500 on the weekend, go to the club, that's what I'm spending when I'm out, you feel right, me? Right, right. Once God brought me to a sudden halt and said, uh-uh, you can't, you can't do this no more. You just gotta worry about this. Mm -hmm. But I had to change my whole, this nigga talk about survivor. I had to change my whole like mindset on everything. I had to relearn money, you know what I'm saying? Bro, at the age of 25, you feel me? I had to relearn money. I had to relearn time. I had to relearn everything. You feel me? So, you know, I say I say this like I feel like I'm. I surround my. I don't surround myself with nobody that I can't learn from. And the biggest thing that I do learn from this man shit right next to you, bro, is that, but you do got to put your family first, bro, because you can get lost. Yeah. Bro, you can get lost, bro. You can get lost trying to touch the dollar, bro. My mom, like Gucci say, you get <laughs> lost in that sauce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. All, right. All right, so let me ask y'all this, man. Um, where 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 do y'all want to take this, Luke? You know, where do you want to take the shop? Where do you want to lead these boys? Where do you want to see them to go? Mm -hmm. No cap, you know. Where do you want the the barbering itself to take you? You know, what do you hope to to accomplish with Luke, you know, here in Jax, things like that, man. Do y'all wanna travel a bit with it? Uh shit, I ain't gonna lie to you, like like I, I love cutting hair, right? But I don't love it enough to where I I wanna be a barber for the rest of my life. Like I don't I hate it. I, I I love like people be like, this might sound selfish or whatever. The the amount of capital it brings me is motivating because I can see, like I said, my family being taken care of. Right. They they get what they want, not just what they need. So it makes me go harder for them. For sure. But remember I told you in the beginning, I said cutting hair was a last minute thing. Right. And right. it just was like a art that I just always had in myself that I just, I kind of had to unlock that old feature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I unlocked that, that thing about me. I was like, oh, dang, bro, you, you're uh, considered the best or one of the best barbers in Florida. Right. or whatever like you know what i'm saying but i don't believe in that because i'm like bro like if i'm the best you like how he cutting you you feel me right, so right you feel me like i'm just like okay so on the standpoint as barbering i let the other barbers have that but at the end of the day like my main focus is being the best dad in the world or yeah. or like just like making more time for my people that i care about you know what i'm saying i'm gonna use barbering 
to get me everything that I want and my people want. I want to take. I want to get back to my people. You know what I'm saying? I know barbering changed my life, so I wouldn't mind handing that torch to somebody else so they can change their life and they can tell. You know what I'm saying? That's I'm not. Shit. I'm That's not. I'm not, I'm not selfish, shit. bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I, I'm like, hey, I enjoyed this. Yeah. I enjoy this. You should try this. Right. 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 You feel me? Yeah. And like, I'm on. I want to be on the next project. Like, I love cutting hair. Is my job. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm passionate about it. I I'm passionate about cutting hair. I'm passionate about making you feel better about yourself. Right. Like you said, like you was like, she was like, dang, that's you? And yeah, you was yeah, like, yeah. you was like, that's a great feeling, bro. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? You know how that <laughs> made me feel? Up, like, man. I feel like I was there. Like, like, like bro, like, like, straight up. You know what I'm up. saying? Like, bro, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> Barbering, like, the, the price is elevated. But like the best feeling, bro, is when you walk out that shit and you be like, you know that you invincible. All right, so let me say this, man. I I I be the first to complain about how the prices have elevated, right? Yeah. But I also be the first to say like, yo, look, I definitely get what I do, you know, what I paid for you and gotta, more. You gotta adapt. Yeah, yeah, straight up, and that's exactly it. Like, adapt to survive. If, <laughs> if people can pay five dollars a gallon, come on. And complain about it, Come on. and they but they still gotta pay it. Hey, look, yeah, I ain't it. arguing with y'all niggas none. I respect yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? No, but listen, I respect but listen, it. we had a, we had a, we had a like, that was a. Bro, I'm talking about we were trying to see how high we can go with it. Remember? And we was like, oh shit, I'm slow <laughs> as fuck. All right, so let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. <laughs> this is true. That was a very funny <laughs> ass week in the bro, show. Bro, listen, we. I was like, I was like, man, I'm finna go to 70, 80. I told, I told my homie Elm. I was like, man, I'm finna bring these boys through. And, um, you know, I made a joke. Say, man, these boys probably finna charge me to do the damn podcast, right? <laughs> that nigga say, shit, I bet they charge a hundred for the haircut. No, for <laughs> real. <laughs> hey, man, look, like like we said, sometimes you get lost, bro, and you realize that, just, bro, time is literally. Oh, you, you got to pay because, for the time, yeah. Because sure. and you got to think, as a barber, bro, niggas want their haircuts at the most weird Inconvenient time, time yeah. in the no, bro it gets weird bro but, but i want to say one thing three in the them. morning bro yeah that's, who the fuck that's, thinking about their hair cut at yeah. three in the fucking morning bro, bro that nigga I had, say, i'm I going had, to fuck uh, at four <laughs> i had an artist call me uh be one to yesterday um <laughs> man i don't even know what time it is i'm in bed playing madden right and my boy was like hey bro you want to go cut blah 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 you know what I'm saying? And I was like, yeah, I'll do it. And I didn't realize what time it was. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, I'd be so ready to chase that bag. Straight but, up. But my, my, my biggest thing to everybody is like, when you get that bag, don't let that money change you. You know what I'm saying? Because for example, like, I ain't gonna lie. Like, we so used to getting paid for stuff like this. Mm -hmm. But I told myself, I'm not gonna let the money change me. Right, right. I want to come in here and show love. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? We not gonna let the money change us. We, we gonna come up. in because... One day, bro, you're gonna be bigger than off the porch and all them boys. And guess oh, what? I get yeah. to, I get to say, bro, I'm on my dog. I'm on my dog. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you, you supported me. You come to my shop. I want to support you. you straight me? up, straight up, you man. One hand love. wash the other, dog. That's how it go. That's how we grow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No but, cap, man. What you want to leave the people with? Man, what I want to leave these people with today, bro. I just want to say, you know, no matter what it is you may be dealing with, as far as you trying to make it and trying to. You know what I'm saying? Figure out where you at with whatever you doing, whether you rap, dance, sing, cut hair, do hair, whatever, bro. Just don't stop. The biggest mistake you gonna ever, is two mistakes you gonna make. Stopping and making the decision to not learn. Like, mm. keep learning and whatever it is you doing, just don't stop, bro. And you gonna do whatever you supposed to do on everything. Man, both of y'all just gave some really good advice, man. Definitely take heed to what they said. Um, go ahead and plug all of your shit, man. Let these people know where they can check out them cuts. And matter of fact, man, if y'all barbers ain't getting cut, I mean, cutting y'all shit like these boys, slap their ass. You know what I'm <laughs> so. Man, um, you can find me on Instagram, and that's Luke uh, underscore Nashon, which is N A H S H O N. Um, uh, our shop is located on five eight six South Edgewood Avenue by Murray Hill. We don't got a name yet, but when you see that dark tent, 
on the building that's a, that looked like a church. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, people, it'd be crazy, bro. Before I leave, bro, we, there's a tattoo shop next to us, right? Yeah, and I seen that. It's predominantly more white people, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? And our shop is more, I would say, more of an urban Nigga, culture. That shit black, yeah. That, <laughs> Listen, that right? shit. I ain't trying to like offend nobody, right. right? I never seen a like a white lady walk in yeah. to the shop thinking she was supposed to go to the tattoo shop. Oh, next that's to funny. She oh, walked wow. in really, and damn near had a heart attack. She was like. Hub was like, Hub talking about, you, you never seen no black people before? Like, <laughs> man, you never seen this nigga before, man? man that he was like, he was like you yeah. good? She talking about, this not a tattoo shop. He was like, <laughs> he was like, baby, that's next door. <laughs> but she about passed out. Man, man that's funny as, as hell, man. She was scared as fuck. She won too many niggas in here, man. <laughs> but shit, y'all can find me on Instagram at uh, no cap underscore cuts with two z's um you know what i'm saying i had a little you know instagram hacky hacky Fuck all y'all, uh, <laughs> oh, for real, if somebody trying to send you 500 on cash app ain't nothing yeah, like for man. free yeah, yeah. somebody yeah. Try don't to click no links on the ground nah, <laughs> you don't know them you don't trust them shit even, even if, if you, know. you do call even them motherfuckers you know. before hey, you click that even link, if you man. know if somebody want to bless you with 500 cash app that man, shit gonna hit your shit regardless me. yeah right. straight up you heard me cuz they ain't gonna dm you to tell you hey can i get your consent to send you 500 y'all need you to sign this them fake sugar mamas on instagram but that be the worst First ones, hey, honey, I want to take care of you. If you trying to take my page, just say that. Straight up, <laughs> I'll give you the password. Just chill. You don't gotta. You ain't gotta sell me a dream. Straight up. <laughs> hey man so like i say y'all tap in with these boys definitely check them out man see what your haircut should be looking like you know what i'm saying um if you hear local like i say i i vouch for them myself you know y'all pull up on them uh they good people it's great energy the shop is dope if you want to book that appointment no cap cuts dot booksy dot com that's where you uh can book all your yes, appointments sir. you'll see everything up there I got all y'all most definitely reading is essential man the book button is on my page it says book now yeah. just hit that button straight up it's that straight simple up. it's one one touch away <laughs> please cash only please cash 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 only. cash only that's how we please rocking yeah man help these boys out with that cash only because niggas be pulling up like right. my damn self, I'd be like, man. I, yeah, I you can take cash out. I'd be like, I cash out you. <laughs> I, I gotta. I don't trust myself. Straight up, straight <laughs> up. You know what I mean? Y'all do be hey. creative out here, bro. <laughs> the, the funny shit is, I'm cash only, right? Yeah. You know, I charge fifty. So when they use the ATM, it only takes out 20s. So they'll be like, you got change for a 10. I'll be like, I cash app you 10. He's like, <laughs> he talking about, you cash only though. I said, I'm a cash app you though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got you. I'm a cash app you. <laughs> That's funny, it's man. evil world. You hear me? I'll pull up on these boys, man. <laughs> Oh boy, you capping. Yeah, I'ma cash up you the chain. You good? Straight up, man. <laughs> shit, leave that 10 with me, nigga. You <laughs> like that cut. <laughs> you know what I'm but saying? Nah, most everybody show love, man. Yeah. Shout everybody out to the clients, bro. Shout out to the people that come forward with us all the time, bro. Hell yeah, yeah. Shout out to Jacksonville coming together, man. I, I we appreciate you uh having us, bro. You know what I'm saying? Anything man. we can do for you in the shop too. You know, just let us know, bro. Yeah, you feel me? Yeah, for sure. Shit, y'all done did enough, man. You caught some rugs. That 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 meant a lot in itself. You know what I'm saying? I really need like, some more while you playing, though. Man, say less. You see I'm in the works, I man. I'll show y'all some more. You, you got fact. the Wu-Tang? Uh, man, I got a Thanos piece in the back. That bitch so bad. Uh, hey, I'm a okay. big-ass nerd. Nobody knows that, but I'm a big-ass nerd. I love toys <laughs> and all that shit. I don't care. <laughs> shit, I'm trying to get into some toy <laughs> shit, too, man. So, <laughs> love that yeah, shit. I got some ideas, man. So... Y'all be on the lookout for what's in store, man. We're going to have a uh, Loot Nation No Cap Cuts plug with the Royal Collab coming soon. Yes, <laughs> that bitch going to say cash only. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I like hey, that, that shit will go like hard, that, man. Y'all go ahead and place bro. y'all orders, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, again, I appreciate y'all coming through, man. I'm going to leave y'all with a round of applause because y'all did a hell of an interview. Y'all gave some great pointers, you know what I'm saying? So listeners like i say if y'all need to run this shit back do it you know listen to it twice take everything in uh these are two successful brothers that you know again i'll vouch for any day of the week like i say not only are they good people but they work speaks for itself you know tap in on social media show some love and support like i say that's how we all grow so with all of that said man i thank y'all again and until next time it's been a moment with mister
Yes, sir. Yes, sir.